Hi and welcome to Last Second Medicine channel. Mycosis is the term applied to disease caused by fungal infection. The majority of fungi encountered by humans are harmless saprophytes, but certain circumstances makes them prone to be infected by some species and may cause disease by promoting damaging allergic reactions or producing toxins. Aspergillus is a fungus which can cause a variety of diseases like asthma, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, aspergilloma or mycetoma, hypersensitivity pneumonitis previously called as extrinsic allergic alveolitis and invasive aspergillosis. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is relatively common and it is the topic of our video. It is also known as asthmatic pulmonary eosinophilia. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis occurs as a result of type 1 and type 3 hypersensitivity reactions to germinating fungal spores of aspergillus fumigatus in the airway wall. The condition may complicate the course of asthma and cystic fibrosis and is a recognized cause of pulmonary eosinophilia in these patients. The prevalence of ABPA is approximately 1-5% in asthma and 2-5% in cystic fibrosis, which is highly significant. A variety of human leukocyte antigens convey both an increased and a decreased risk of developing the condition, suggesting that genetic susceptibility is important. Clinical features depend on the stage of the disease. Common manifestations in early phase include fever, breathlessness, cough productive of bronchial casts and worsening of asthmatic symptoms. There is initially symptoms of bronchoconstriction but then permanent damage occurs causing bronchiectasis. If bronchiectasis develops, the symptoms and complications of that disease often overshadow those of asthma. So the clinical features include wheeze, cough, sputum which are plugs of mucus containing fungal hyphae dyspnea and recurrent pneumonia. Diagnostic features of ABPA consist of asthma in majority of cases, proximal bronchiectasis, positive skin test to an extract of aspergillus fumigatus, elevated total serum immunoglobulin E, usually more than 1000 nanogram per ml, elevated aspergillus fumigatus specific IgE or IgG antibodies. Peripheral blood eosinophilia more than 0.5 into 10 raised to power 9 per liter. Presence or history of chest x-ray abnormalities. In ABPA, fleeting abnormalities on the chest x-ray can be seen and fungal hyphae of aspergillus fumigatus on microscopic examination of sputum. Investigations which need to be done include CBC which may show eosinophilia Sputum will show aspergillus in sputum on microscopy. Positive allergic skin test to aspergillus fumigatus. Raised total and aspergillus specific IgE antibodies. Serum precipitins are positive. And on X-ray, there are transient or fleeting segmental collapse or consolidation and you may also find bronchiectasis. High resolution CT scan of chest will show typical features of ABPA that is proximal bronchiectasis which may occupy up to inner two thirds of the chest CT field. Here you can see that there are typical bronchiectatic changes more on the right side and these are central. Differential diagnosis of ABPA include bronchial asthma, other causes causing bronchiectasis, invasive aspergillosis, shark strauss syndrome and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Complications of this disease include hemoptysis, severe bronchiectasis, pulmonary fibrosis and atelectasis due to mucus plugs. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is generally considered an indication for regular therapy with low dose of oral glucocorticoids with the aim of suppressing the immunological responses and preventing progressive tissue damage. Exacerbations, particularly when associated with new chest X-ray changes, should be treated promptly with prednisolone 40 to 60 mg per day and chest physiotherapy. In some patients, itraconazole 400 mg per day facilitates a reduction in oral glucocorticoids. 
A four-month trial is usually recommended to assess its efficacy. Bronchodilators are also used for asthmatic symptoms. The use of specific anti-IgE monoclonal antibodies is under consideration. If persistent low bar collapse occurs, bronchoscopy, usually under general anesthesia, should be performed to remove impacted mucus and ensure prompt reinflation. I hope you liked this video. If so, please share with your colleagues and subscribe to this channel. Share your thoughts by commenting in the comment section below.